Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Crystal and today I want to talk to you about vaginal yeast infections. Now vaginal yeast infections are probably not your favorite topic to talk about, but they need to be talked about because most menstruators have experience with yeast infections. It is very common. So what is a vaginal yeast infection? So a vaginal yeast infection happens when the microbiome in your vagina becomes imbalanced and this imbalance shifts to allow more candida or yeast cells to grow. Now before we get into why it happens, the symptoms, all that kind of stuff, I think we should talk about yeast for a second because yeast is not terrible. It's in your vaginal microbiome. It's all around your body. It's something that we have. It's normal to have yeast in your microbiome, but what's not normal is to have an overgrowth of it. And yeast is a single cell fungi which will easily grow if the conditions are correct. Now when it comes comes to vaginal yeast infections, the most common cause is the type of yeast called Candida albicans. Yes, that's right. I couldn't pronounce this the first time I recorded this video, so I have to do a voiceover to pronounce it now. I will write it right here so you guys can see how it's spelled. But there are different types of yeast that can also cause infection. And that is why it's important that if you do suspect you have a yeast infection, to get a culture to make sure you know what you're dealing with. And then when you know what you're dealing with, you can look at the root cause. Because there's a lot of root causes of vaginal yeast infections and candida overgrowth. The biggest cause would be poor gut health or an issue with your gut health and so that can be due to multiple different reasons. There's also a ton of evidence that suggests that antibiotic use can wipe your gut flora and your gut microbiome out which can also affect your vaginal microbiome because all your microbiomes they're all connected so if something is wrong in your gut microbiome it'll probably affect your vaginal microbiome. Other things that can affect your microbiome is birth control, having sex that can disrupt your microbiome, a new partner, that can also disrupt your microbiome, as well as condoms or lubricant that you're using, IUDs, tampons, as well as things like blood sugar issues, pregnancy, stress, and trauma. All of these things can cause an imbalance in your vaginal microbiome, and that can cause an environment where candida can grow and thrive and cause a vaginal yeast infection. Now, some symptoms that you want to look out for is thick clumpy discharge and so that is usually like the first kind of sign that something is going on another really common symptom is itching and burning so if you are experiencing any itching and burning in your vagina get it checked out right away and you might also experience pain during intercourse so if you are experiencing any of these symptoms just please talk to a health professional. It is so important because it could be a vaginal yeast infection, but it could also be another underlying thing. The most common times that vaginal yeast infections appear is the week before your period or while you're on your period or the week after. That seems to be the most common time that yeast infections appear. And in some cases, vaginal yeast infections can resolve on their own and they might not need medical intervention or over-the-counter medication. But like I said before, it's really important to know what kind of yeast you're dealing with. Some are a little bit more problematic than others and once you get checked out for a yeast infection and have confirmed that that is what you're having, that is when you want to look at the root causes like I mentioned before in the video. These causes are what throw your microbiome out of balance and gut health is one of the biggest things. So it's really important to focus on your diet and your gut health, especially if you're having reoccurring chronic yeast infections. It's a really, really good idea to just take another look at your gut health and see if you have anything going on there and to also look at your diet and what your diet is made up of. Because eating a lot of refined sugar as well as consuming a lot of alcohol can actually make yeast infections more prevalent and it's really easy when you shift into eating those foods that things get thrown off. Avoiding refined sugar as well as alcohol is super important. Now refined sugar means like table sugar. Sugar in refined food is different than sugar in whole food. Foods. So like fruits or vegetables or other foods with carbohydrates in them, those foods are good. You want to focus on 
whole foods. Carbohydrate rich foods are the richest sources of fiber in the diet. So they're really important to have. And of course, these foods include all plant-based whole foods. These foods are so good for your gut microbiome. Not only do they provide your gut microbiome with fiber, but fiber actually helps support your gut in moving towards a healthier environment. It supplies your good gut bacteria with good food. It can help fix dysbiosis and leaky gut. So make sure to fill up on whole food plants if you want to create the best environment for gut health in your body. Other things that are really good would be berries and fermented foods. Those are super great for gut health as well. And all of these foods that are high in fiber and good for gut health also stabilize blood sugar. And imbalanced blood sugar can actually lead to yeast infections. Now as far as treatment goes, it's really important to talk to a professional. There are a lot of like at-home treatments online. Um, I did a lot of research on them and some of them were like scary. <laughs> because they were just so bad for your mucous membranes. Um, I think a lot of us tend to forget that the vagina is a mucous membrane and it's very sensitive. So spraying, you know, tea tree oil or um, spraying apple cider vinegar up there can be really damaging. You just, you don't want to do that. It can irritate things further. But what you can do to support your vaginal microbiome is to do vaginal suppositories. And there's uh, quite a few different ones on the market. And some of them have actually been clinically studied and there are certain strains that are actually really helpful for yeast infections. So it's really important when you are looking at vaginal suppositories or looking at taking a probiotic that you make sure to get these kind of strains that have been studied to help support the vaginal microbiome. Of course, Vaginal suppositories and probiotics, those are only one piece of the puzzle, but you really need to get down to the root cause. Like, do you have a new partner? Have you been using different kind of barrier methods? Do you have an IUD? Do you take birth control? How's your stress levels? Do you have any trauma in your life? What is your diet like? And do you drink a lot of alcohol? These are all questions that you can ask yourself when you're dealing with yeast infections. Even sometimes clothing and like sweating in clothing that's not meant for sweating can cause yeast infections. Like our vaginas are very delicate. So just asking yourself these questions and making sure that you are taking care of your body in the best way you can. And then also talking to a health professional to make sure that you are able to get the support that you need if you need to take medication or if you need over-the-counter remedies. Because there are a lot of over-the-counter remedies like creams and stuff that can help clear up yeast infections pretty quickly. But again, always make sure to know what you're treating so you're actually treating the right thing. So I hope this video helped you guys and I hope it explained a little bit more of what vaginal yeast infections are. They're very common so like don't feel bad or embarrassed if you have one. Like I'm pretty sure every menstruator will get at least one in their life and these things happen and sometimes it's out of your control. You know if you were just sick and you took antibiotics it's very common to have a yeast infection afterwards and there's a lot of things that you can do to help support your body. So if you guys have any questions let me know in the comments below. As always thank you so much for watching and for the support. I just want to let you know that your cycle matters so much and I am here for you and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye!